All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Inside our lab, we have Gigabyte's Z77X-UD5H Wi-Fi model. So this is one of the Gigabyte's upper-end motherboards in their lineup. Usually their UD7 is going to be their top of the line. Their UD5 is right underneath it. So we're going to take a look at the board. We're going to take a look at the box that it comes in. We're also going to take a look at some of the component selection and what you get or what a Gigabyte is telling you that you get with the product as you look at it here. All right, taking a look at the front of the box, we have Gigabyte's now um, familiar white box, you know, front. They've done. They've moved away from some of their older designs where it was black or gold or some of the other flashy colors, and they had that reflective material in there. Here, you just have a plain white box. It gives it a cleaner look. You have their new 3D, you know, open wireframe box or cube as their logo, which is in, you know, indicates their 3D power, their 3D BIOS, all of those things. They have, uh, you know, those are listed as prominent features on the front, which is something they want to get across. These are new things to Gigabyte, and they say, look, this is what we have. These are great features, so we want to, you know, put this out to you. Of course, you do have your Ultra Durable. Uh, this is the fourth generation of Ultra Durable. It's new and improved. They've got additional features that they've added into the lineup, such as your humidity protection. Uh, it's a new type of fiberglass that they put into the board that's supposed to allow it to prevent moisture buildup in there, which pr improves product life as well as allows you to use a little bit more advanced cooling without the fear of moisture buildup inside the board. We have to say that we've never actually had a board that built moisture in, you know, up in it, and that includes some server products that were running in less than, let's say, less than ideal conditions. However, it still is a nice feature and a nice, uh, nice, nice feature to put into the boards to make sure that they just last longer. And that's what you're going to get from that, uh, from that add-in there. All right, looking at the bottom, you have your typical, you know, box badges. You know, Z77 chipset. It supports the Core series. You have Bluetooth 4.0 and a 300 megabits dual band Wi-Fi adapter that's going to be in here. It does support SLI. You have your Ultra Durable 4, which we just talked a little bit about. And then, of course, it's going to tell you more information. And then their unlocked performance with the K-Series uh, CPUs. That's going to be Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. You can actually use either or in here. And we all know about the issues that people are talking about with Ivy Bridge. So if you're looking to overclock, you might want to pick up a Sandy Bridge CPU and throw it in here just to see, you know, not necessarily to see what you get, but you're probably going to get a higher clock speed. But we can say that it's not going to guarantee that you're going to get higher performance with that higher clock speed. All right, let's flip the box around to the back and take a look at what we've got here. On the back, you have a nice diagram or a nice picture of the board. It's going to show you what's there. You do have that MSATA connector on board. This is going to be on all, almost all of their Z77 products. You got a little bit more information about your 3D power. It's going to explain what it is, what it works, why it's important to you, all of the typical things that you get with most of your marketing materials. You have a better explanation of the Ultra Durable 4, what you get with your humidity protection, your electrostatic protection, power failure protection, high temperature protection. All of them sort of combine to go together to make up one product. And this, these are the four major benefits of that particular product, which is the Ultra Durable 4 that they put in here. You have your Intel Smart Response. Um, you can see some of the information that they're going to throw here. Uh, Creative, Sound Blaster, XFi, MB2 is going to be on the board. You have Gigabyte Dual LAN, um, which gives you one uh, Intel Ethernet controller, and it looks like a Qualcomm Athera. So we're talking about the different LAN functions that are there. And then, of course, up here at the top, you have your Virtue MVP, and uh, you've got a picture of your Wi-Fi module that's going to fit into a PCIe one or X1 slot. So it's going to take up one of those slots. This is different from what we saw in the ASUS boards where they actually put it into a pinout that's up towards the top of the board. It's going to keep it away from your graphics cards, all of that. You know, it's a different design thought. Uh, we're not going to say whether one is better than the other. We do prefer the one that puts it in, you know, up you know, with the other I.O. ports just because it's a little bit of a cleaner design. However, this one is just as good. We've seen that with the in actual Intel card itself as well as with this one, uh, you know, we'll see that here once we get to the performance side of the review. So that covers what we've got on the outside of the box as far as if you were to see this product in a store. We know that's unlikely in today's age of buying from the late, you know, your favorite e-tailer. However, it's still interesting to see what, is, what these companies are actually pushing out to you with what is on the box. It's going to give you an idea of the features that they feel are the most important to the market. We're going to get the box open, take a look at what you get inside of it, as well as the board. All right, when you get the box open, the first thing you're going to see, uh, very similar to a lot of motherboards, is, or yeah, a lot of motherboard products, is the board is going to be right on top. We're going to set that off to the side because we're going to talk about that in detail a little bit later. Underneath this, this is an entire box for everything to sit in. This is where you're going to find the goodies that Gigabyte has given you with the board itself. You're going to have several uh, packages that are going to have dual SATA uh, 2 and SATA 3 cables in them. Those are nice. 
you have a cable that's going to be very important for your wireless card. This is what's actually going to connect the wireless card to a USB header to actually give you the power to, to, get, to run the card itself. You have a USB 3.0 header that goes in the front. This is going to be a front panel style header. So if your case doesn't have it, this will fit in a 3.5 inch bay. The problem that we have with this design now is that 99 is that most of the cases that we're working with lately do not have a three and a half inch bay on them, so this actually becomes a little difficult for you to use in, uh, you know, as your items like floppy drives and zip drives and all of that just they're not sold, so you don't see that in as many cases moving forward as we would have in the past. So it limits the usability of things like that. It'd be nice if they had a bracket or an adapter that would allow it to fit into a full, um, you know, three and a half inch bay, but since they don't. <coughs> you know this is what you get there are adapters and ways that you can make that work in existing cases so we're not going to complain too much uh, as with most boards these days you're going to get an SLI adapter it's going to be specifically designed for the board it's got the right amount of distance between it so that you can make sure that you connect your cards properly you have two antennas for your wireless this is going to be for your dual band this is nice it should give us uh, two special streams which is going to improve performance that's where you get your 300 megabits from with three you can actually push up into 450 and a little bit higher single antenna is going to give you lower performance you know we've talked about a lot of this with our uh, some of our networking articles and of course you have your different manuals you have one for the wireless card you have one for the motherboard itself inside here is your uh, are your two drivers discs you have one for the board itself and one for the Wi-Fi Bluetooth card <clears throat> set those off to the side you have a multilingual installation guide which is nice have a couple of stickers for those that like stickers you have your IO shield with that padding we've seen that you know it's becoming more popular from many different manufacturers now and then of course you actually have your wireless card this card itself although it's using gigabytes uh, PCB and all of that this is almost exactly the reference design that we saw with Intel when they actually launched the Z77 board in fact, let's go ahead and put that down and we'll uh, pull up our Intel card and we'll show you. All right, and the last thing we're going to look at inside the box is going to be the wireless card. This is going to use actually a mini PCIe card that's in there. This is similar to what you see in laptops. And it's also going to follow fairly closely to the Intel layout. You're going to have a USB port here. That's going to be your extra power for this card as well. And you see your spots for your two antennas here. So this is going to control both wireless as well as Bluetooth. You plug this module in and you're pretty much good to go. Again, we say it's going to be using one of those X1 slots on your board. All right, so that covers everything that we found in the box. Let's go ahead and move on to the motherboard itself. So here we have the motherboard, the actual uh, UD5H Wi-Fi edition. Again, looking at it, it's going to be a full-size ATX board. You have your pretty familiar layout with Gigabyte now. Uh, you have that new matte black PCB, which we kind of like. It's got a great look to it and also has a nice feel to it. The traces are not as visible as you would see on a normal board. If you want to take a close look at that, you can see them, but they're definitely, you can tell that they're underneath something here as you see the traces that are coming off of the, the processor socket and moving over to the RAM slots. Again, as we've talked about before, trace tuning is very important. Um, if you don't get your trace tuning set up right, you're going to have all kinds of stability problems and performance issues. So let's take a look at our typical layout on the board. All right, you have a tw your 24-pin port here. You have a USB 3 header that's going to be great for that port that we showed you that comes in the box or if your case ha supports that. You also have your SATA-style power connector. This is moving away from having those Molex connectors which stick up off of the board and create a hassle. This is right along the edge of the board. You grab one at the end of a, of a power, you know, power cable that's coming off your PSU. It's very nice and clean and you can stuck, stuff it out of the way. All right, you do have your uh, power controls that are right on the board. You have power, you have reset, you have a CMOS switch which is going to be CMOS reset. You have a four pin PWM fan header. You have some uh, diagnostic LEDs that are going to be nice if you have this on a bench. And of course your four RAM slots can be your dual channel RAM. Again, the Z77 and Ivy Bridge do support up to DDR3-1600, but it depends on whether or not your RAM supports it as its JDEC spec or its default speed when you first drop it in. There's been a lot of concern about that. If you buy some RAM and it says 1600 megahertz on there, nine times out of 10 it's gonna be set to 1333 at 1 1.5 volts as its JDEC spec. Go ahead and go into the BIOS and enable the XMP profile. 
and that's going to get you that 1600 megahertz at the proper timing settings and voltage and all of that all right we have our cpu fan header here and you also have another fan header on this side so if you again if you're running a uh, dual fan you know air cooler it's going to be helpful you can see all of your chokes uh, they are using all solid capacitors on here that's been a big move uh, there's very few boards unless they're at the lower end of the spectrum that are going to run the traditional style capacitors those were fun uh, if you've never had one of those pop in your face and uh, you, you just haven't you know been playing with computers long enough your 8 pin auxiliary power port is over here it's got a you know fairly decent amount of headroom although we're always going to recommend that you get an extension cable uh, some power supplies actually some cases are coming with those now just so you can get that plugged in and you don't have to worry about losing any knuckle skin we've lost plenty um, in our time working with different systems now we talk about the uh, the cooling here they've actually curled these so that you're less likely when you're moving you know working with some of this stuff to remove knuckle skin however along these edges these are still pretty sharp so if you did have to get your fingers in here for any reason uh, you know, just be careful around that still a pretty good cooling design you can see that over here along this end they understand that you're going to get a lot of heat buildup so what gigabyte has done is they've actually extended this so these fins are actually much longer than the heat sink base itself and that's just going to give this a little bit more uh, cooling to add into the mix they've also extended the heat pipe all the way down to the cooling over the pch this means this is one solid unit we used to see these a lot on older boards older amd boards and of course moving forward a lot of this has been disconnected where you'll see that the cooling will stop here, but it won't actually extend out of the PCH. This means that this is going to be one solid unit. You should get better cooling across the entire board with this. Sometimes it doesn't factor out that way, but we'll be sure to tell you exactly how well it works once we get this on the board and you get this on our test bench and we get everything loaded up. Of course, you have your M SATA slot. One thing to note is that if you do have an SSD in here, uh, port SATA 2, port 5 is not going to be operational, so this is going to kill it. But it's nice to have if you want to buy one of the cheap ones. You know, they do have some inexpensive micro SATA cards that you can throw in there. And that's going to give you a performance boost if you're using a traditional uh, magnetic-based media like an HDD. You know, when you have an SSD in there, the benefit would be almost negligible. You really wouldn't see anything, especially if you're using a SATA 3 SSD, one with the new Sandforce controllers. And let's take a look at the peripherals. You have three X1 slots, so you have uh, quite a bit of room as far as where you want to put that X1 Wi-Fi card. It looks like it's pretty much set up for you to throw it in this one that gets it up and out of the way and you don't have you know you really wouldn't want to extend that card too much farther back uh, of course you have your two slots uh, well actually three PCIe x16 mechanical slots and you flip the board over and what we see is that you've got one x16 that's going to be your generation 3 one x8 and one x4 so these two these are only this is only ever going to be x8 it can't be anymore they've only given you the pins for x8 and this one down here they've only given you the pins for x4 and then of course you have a pci slot you know just in case you have one of those older pci audio cards that you want to throw in here or, or something along those lines right along the bottom of the board you have some nice options you have 1394 which gigabyte has actually always been good about throwing a you know a firewire port on there you do have some additional USB 3.0 ports, which we find interesting. You have two extra ones down here. These are going to be good pinouts. This one's good for front panel, and these two can be used for a back panel if you want to change that existing um, one that they throw in the case to something to run into one of your back peripheral slots on your case. You can work that out that way. Your front panel uh, pinout, though, is in the middle of the board here. We're not exactly sure how well that's going to work with some of your cases where they run the cables down, and they only give you enough cable to kind of get it in the middle here. So you might have to cut across the board, which could make this for a unusual design as far as when you get your case built and as, you know your cable management going. Um, you have your, uh, you know, you do have another G SATA here, which is part of your Gigabyte SATA. This can be primarily used again if you have a front panel. You might want to plug it into that for any kind of E SATA. All right, so that covers everything we've got along the bottom here. Oh, you do have another fan header that's down here. So they have a good amount of uh, four pin pan fan headers. You have one, two three four five so you have five four pin fan headers on here that are going to be uh, pwm controlled it's kind of a nice amount you know pretty fairly typical for this range of board All right looking at the ports here you have this is the g sata that's going to be sata three you have another set of sata three and then you have four sata two that are going to come off of the pch usually the white one on gigabyte is going to be off of the pch and this is going to be a marble controller of some sort so that covers everything we've got on this portion of the board. Let's go ahead and flip it around and take a look at the back panel. You have uh, a nice array of video out options if you're going to use the Ivy Bridge uh, 
GPU, the GMA 4000 that's in the 3770K like what we have. You have VGA, DVI-I, you have DisplayPort, and you have HDMI. So you have all four options to, to get you going depending on what your mo monitor is. One thing we will say is that you need to be careful that you have your DVI-D uh, connector there. As you can't fit just in pretty much anyone in there. It's, you know, it's a slimmer port, so if you have a traditional DVI-I or one of the other ones, it's not going to work in there because that final blade there is just too thin to, to fit into it. So that's something to take into consideration. You have your optical out, you have some powered USB 2.0 ports, Firewire, eSATA, dual LAN, one's going to be Intel as we said, the other one's going to be uh, Qualcomm. You have your fairly typical audio out here as well as four USB 3.0 ports. Uh, one of these is going to come off of Intel, the other one's going to be one of the you know other uh, USB 3.0 controllers. And we also know based on the amount of uh, USB 3.0 ports here that they are using the VIA uh, onboard USB 3.0 hub so they're probably splitting a third-party controller and allowing the PCH one to run to the back so that covers everything that we've got with the Gigabyte Z77X UDH or UD5H Wi-Fi edition as always if you like this video be sure to click on the like button be sure to share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you